Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, December 8th, 2015, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight, the internet explodes over Trump advocating a moratorium on immigration from Muslim countries. But is it really about the First Amendment? None of the pundits had a problem when he said this about the internet. Maybe in certain areas, closing that internet up in some way. Somebody will say, oh, freedom of speech, freedom of speech. These are foolish people. No, the liberals have no problem with controlling speech. And they want to control firearms as well. Huffington Post calls for the government to seize all firearms. Problem is, they have 100 million guns more to confiscate since Obama began pushing confiscation. And the founder of the Weather Channel talks about climate reality. And now they're telling us we have records because of hundreds of a degree. You've got to be kidding. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. of things to come. Here's what's going on in France right now. That This is a cell phone video that was taken from a, a Hungarian truck driver. Took this video as he's, he routinely drives through France. And by the way, this is just a couple of weeks before the Paris attacks. And he's driving past a Syrian. In refugee camp where there's about 18,000 refugees located on, right there on the side of the road. I want you to watch, Leanne, watch the behavior of these guys, all right? Yeah. I mean, they, they have... They're, they're very they're, aggressive. And they're all, and they're all noticed they're about from anywhere from 17 to mm -hmm. about 35 years old. Total lack of respect. for the motorist on the highways yeah, and completely these are really dangerous what's happening here well and here they are they're throwing rocks they're throwing bottles at the trucks um at one point in the video one of the guys guys even runs to the side of the truck and and bends his uh, side mirror but where are all the women and children yeah where's where's the three-month-old uh, orphans mm -hmm. As even runs to the side of the truck and, and bends his uh, side mirror. But where are all the women and children? Yeah, where's where's the three-month-old uh, orphans? Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't I don't notice notice that mm -hmm. uh, I don't see him there. Yeah. But hey, look, these are ignorant thugs, and they're throwing up gang signs, and, and they're acting like the real subhuman. And animals that they are, and, and this is not a very good way to win the hearts and minds of people who live in the country that they are immigrating to. So I think that this is what's coming to America. Right. Well, absolutely, and you know, well, absolutely, and you know, we reported about last week about uh, the people there on the border in Macedonia holding up that banner that said "Open or Die." That's your choice. Let us in or we're going to kill you. So, and they were throwing rocks and, and, and yeah. sticks and bottles at the police over there as and well. And I can understand their frustration. Obviously, they've just traveled all this way and now the borders are closed. So then they're frustrated. But that's not you don't say open or die. That's I mean, so now you're basically just putting uh, fear into people. And then, of course, not knowing um, who is going to be entering the country as well. We have obviously details coming out daily about what was going on uh, with the shooter as well as his family. Um, we know that they have found in the mother's car, they've got shooting targets, GoPro packaging, hammer, vice grips. Um, they were found in her car. Also, the shooter's mother was active in a U.S. branch pro-caliphate Islamic group. Uh, so this is, you know, this is one of these groups that's sort of a side group that's maybe not part of uh, the main mosque that's there. Um, you know, but we really have no idea what's going on, not to mention this mysterious bank deposit. And Darren, I know that you said that this uh, sort of reminded you about what was happening right uh, right after 9-11, some things that we found out as well. Well, yeah, it's it's very interesting that her husband, Saeed Farouk, right, that uh, somehow he managed to get a very large deposit in his bank account. And this is only a couple of weeks before the massacre, mm -hmm. right? And he had a sudden and mysterious deposit of $28,500 in his bank account. 
and it reminds me of the uh, a similar deposit in the weeks before 9-11 when the lead hijacker, Mohammed Atta, he received $100,000 in his account from the head of the Pakistani ISI, General Ahmed. Hmm. And uh, here's an article from The Guardian. Ahmed, who's the paymaster for the hijackers, was actually in Washington on 9-11. He had a series of pre-9-11 top-level meetings with the White House, the Pentagon, and the National Security Council, and with George Tenet, who was the head of the CIA at the time. So wow. General Ahmed, who was the head of the Pakistani ISI, the, their intelligence program, just like the America's CIA, he is buddy-buddy with uh, George Tenet, and he's also buddy-buddy with Muhammad Atta. Right. Oh, wow. Well, Darren, thank you. That's very interesting. So hopefully we'll be able to you know, get some more clues as this story unfolds. Now, CNN actually came out to ask Trump, are you a fascist with some of the things that he has been saying? Trump turns around and he says, you know what, we need a certain toughness or we're not going to have a country left. And so, you know, I just kind of wanted to call him out on that because some of the things that Trump is proposing are very fascist indeed. Um, Donald Trump is saying in order to fight this terrorism, he thinks he's going to call up Bill Gates to close up the Internet. He, he, actually, he actually had this to say. We're losing a lot of people because of the Internet. And we have to do something. We have to go see Bill Gates and a lot of different people that really understand what's happening. We have to talk to them, maybe in certain areas, closing that Internet up in some way. Somebody will say, oh, freedom of speech, freedom of speech. These are foolish people. So there you go. First Amendment, who really cares about that? Now, Google's Eric Schmidt is also saying the same thing. He says that he wants to use Google's algorithms to censor the Internet for hate speech. Uh, this was in an op-ed for The New York Times. Schmidt said, it's our responsibility to demonstrate that stability and free expression go hand in hand. So we should build tools to help de-escalate tensions on social media, sort of like spell checkers, but for hate and harassment. Now, Alex Jones has been saying this for years, that this is what's going to start happening. Obviously, those algorithms know what you're going to type before you even finish the sentence. And so this is the type of thing, policing the Internet now. Uh, of course, this is um, echoed by Hillary Clinton, who also uh, called on Silicon Valley to disrupt ISIL. She also is wanting to um, have these tech workers do what they can to police the Internet as well. You'll recall some feminists went before the United Nations a, a month or so ago calling for the exact same thing because they didn't like some of the bullying that was going on on the Internet. They didn't like it when people disagreed with their opinion or called them stupid. So these are the type of things that they want to police the Internet for. So obviously, yeah, you want to stop terrorism, especially since they say radicalization happens via social media. But we can see that this is going to be farther, much further reaching than just that. Now, obviously, this hate speech that they're wanting to patrol has nothing to do with uh, liberals or progressives when they say that they want to kill people with ideas that counter theirs. This is what's happening. Uh, a flood of Twitterers are now calling to kill Donald Trump. They're calling for his assassination, basically. This is the liberal reaction to the Republican frontrunner's comments on Muslim immigration. Obama boldly stated that the federal government has the Syrian refugee crisis under control. We've hardened our defenses from airports to financial centers to other critical infrastructure. Intelligence and law enforcement agencies have disrupted countless plots here and overseas and worked around the clock to keep us safe. Our military and counterterrorism professionals have relentlessly pursued terrorist networks overseas, disrupting safe havens in several different countries, killing Osama bin Laden. But Obama didn't happen to mention that Representative Stephen Lynch, Democrat of Massachusetts, disclosed that a congressional investigation recently found that at least 72 people working at the Department of Homeland Security also were on the terror watch list. What would have been a scandal 30 years ago was barely mentioned today. Enter Donald Trump. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. Soon after that statement, 
The liberal reactionaries on Twitter replied with fervor, even going so far as to call for Trump's assassination. Tweets included, Can we kill Trump? Now he wants to impede Muslims from entering the U.S. Someone really needs to kill Trump, ASAP. Somebody kill Trump. I genuinely mean it. And I'd rather murder Trump and rot in jail than let my kid grow up in a world with Trump as president. Fresh off of backtracking her statements disregarding the First Amendment, it appears Attorney General Loretta Lynch would find all of this call to violent action, at the very least, predicating. Of course, she won't bat an eye, because Trump is on the wrong team. The lamestream media began to weigh in with their bought and paid for tactics. You have leaders from your own party in the key states of Iowa, New Hampshire, South Carolina. You have galvanized political rivals all saying this is un-American and extreme and that it makes you a fascist. How do you respond? Well, I totally disagree. Um, you, take a look, you take a look, Chris, at what's going on, and it is disgraceful. First of all, you know, people quickly forget World Trade Center 1, World Trade Center number 2. Not to be outdone, the flustered Republican field was all aglow with slap-in-the-face collective mentality. Politico writes, Jeb Bush fired back on Twitter saying Donald Trump is unhinged. His policy proposals are not serious. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie said, This is the kind of thing that people say when they have no experience and don't know what they're talking about. The billionaire GOP frontrunner, Trump, argued that what I'm doing is no different than FDR likening his proposal to policies implemented by Roosevelt against people of Japanese, German, and Italian descent during World War II. And that's just it. You can't cover up an invasion of 72% male Syrian refugees into foreign lands, where women are being raped at epidemic levels and jihad attacks are brandishing a foothold in regularity in Western culture. Wake up and smell the reality. We are under attack, courtesy of our do-nothing, say-nothing commandeer-in-chief. How many suicide bombings on American soil are the leftist lamestream media bobbleheads prepared to spin before Americans have to bail them out of hell on earth, fomented by their own PC rhetoric and global masters' talking points? John Bound for Infowars.com. Now coming up, I'm gonna be speaking with someone who actually attended the same mosque as the shooter, but first I wanted to just um, show you this story that someone sent me earlier on Twitter. Uh, it's about a blind mystic who reportedly foretold about 9-11. She predicted the Boxing Day tsunami, Fukushima nuclear spill, uh, as well as the birth of ISIS. Uh, but she made some pretty dire predictions for 2016 and beyond. It's her, uh, this is Baba Vanga, and she predicted a great Muslim war. And she foretells of a 2016 invasion of Europe by Muslim extremists. She predicted it would begin with the Arab Spring in 2010, play out in Syria, and that Muslims would use chemical warfare against Europeans, cul culminating in the establishment of a caliphate by 2043. So she also predicted the uh, election of the first African-American president, Barack Obama, as the 44th president, but she said it would be the last U.S. president of the United States. So that'll be pretty interesting if we do indeed end up uh, voting in a dictator. So stick around. This is an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a uh, workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to get my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. 